Hello and welcome to Behind the Cloud, the show where we talk about the people and technologies that actually make the enterprise cloud work. My name is David Clark and I'm the head of technology here at Workday. I'm joined today by Pete Schlamp, who's the vice president of analytics at Workday. Welcome, Pete. Glad to be here. How did you come to join Workday and be involved in analytics? I joined Workday in, uh, in August of 2016 uh, after Workday acquired the company I was at, Platfora. I was with Platfora from the early days of the company, and at that company we focused on uh, data analytics and allowing enterprises to answer data, uh, answer questions that they had of their, of their data visually mm -hmm. uh, on a platform called Hadoop and Spark. So the last year has been all about taking that technology that we had at Platfora, integrating it into Workday, and coming up with a new product, which is Workday Prism Analytics. Great. So we're certainly going to talk about that um, momentarily, as they say in America. Mm -hmm. But I guess to back up a little bit, we all know what analytics are broadly, but I think there's a few distinctive um, outlooks that you have on it? Many of our customers want to be data-driven. What I've heard from them is that they are not as data-driven as they want to be. No one is quite where they want to be. And I think everybody makes best efforts to be there. Uh, some major changes have happened. Organizationally, uh, the HR departments and the finance departments have built their own analytics teams, especially when you're a large enterprise. Um, and why, why, why do you think they needed to do that? Like, why, why didn't they just go to the IT guys? Well, so, you know, that's, that's one of the, the, uh, the big changes that's happened over the, the past 10 years is that uh, much of analytics and business intelligence used to be solely driven out of the, the IT organization. We, we found about that, that structure is that when it's centralized, it's hard to be able to ask a, answer a question when you need it, mm -hmm. right? All of the expertise is in one central location. And the other part of that is the people that are in that central location don't understand the business as well. And so the, the change that's happened is we've decentralized the ability to ask questions uh, and we've also made it self-service, so non-experts can do it uh, themselves. And so, so that has happened. We've organizationally changed. The second piece is the technology has changed. Right. So we have moved from very static reporting uh, platforms where you create a report, it runs every morning at 9 o'clock, and that's what you get, and it's never changed, to much more of a self-service and what we call data discovery environment, allowing people to explore the data and ask any question that they, need, that they want to ask when they need it. Mm -hmm. And can non-technical users do that? Because that sounds appealing and straightforward, but in practice what you're eventually doing is constructing complex queries in real time. So how do, how do end users and mere mortals and humans, civilians, right. do that stuff? Well, you know, it, uh, we have to make it easy uh, for, to allow uh, humans uh, to be able to do that uh, themselves. I guess I meant civilians, uh, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> or business users. Yeah. Behind the scenes, there's a lot of technology that has to be put in place to allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. To allow us to do self-service analytics, first of all, you need to have all of the data in one location and in memory. Mm -hmm. uh, when it's in memory, it's fast, it's accessible. It also needs to be organized in the right way to be able to answer your questions quickly. On top of that, you need an interface, an application, that allows a business user to express their question in a way that feels very natural to them. Uh, writing SQL queries mm. is not natural to the average business user. So we need to make a, an interface that allows them to express their question typically through dragging and dropping data onto a screen and instantly getting the visualizations that they need. Could that ever be, I mean, we're all now used to shouting at devices in our home when we don't know something, um, which for me is most of the time, and I'm sure like you, my children don't know any facts anymore. They just know how to ask Google or Alexa. Right. So right. that's a long way of asking. Um, can you ever see us expressing business queries Verbally. Can you see us talking to like Workday boxes or something that will give us magic answers? Absolutely. You know, and we've uh, at Workday we've made uh, a lot of progress with Workday Assistant, uh, allowing Workday Assistant to be able to answer some very common questions about your business. The next step uh, in that area for us in the analytics side is connecting your Workday data and your non-Workday data that you bring in through Prism to that same Workday Assistant and use something uh, called. Uh, natural language query generation to be able to take the question that you're asking and translate it behind the scenes into, in reality, into kind of that complex SQL that I was talking mm -hmm. about before and be able to give you the answer that you need. And what is actually even cooler than that is allowing you to ask the next question with the context of the first question in mind. Mm -hmm. So if you say, 
Uh, tell me what the revenue was for the last uh, four quarters, uh, and Workday Assistant get, will uh, someday give you that answer back, and then be able to say, okay, now let's drill down into Q2. It would know that we're talking about revenue, and it would know how you know where to drill uh, into Q2, maybe either by month or maybe mm -hmm. by by cost center, for instance. Mm -hmm. Okay, looking forward to that. Um, and I guess we've spent a lot of time over the last year integrating the, because Workday has always had a bunch of analytics and a lot of capability, but obviously the Prism, the platform technology brings the ability to overlay that with external sort of data sets as well. So what's been the process of integrating those two systems, I guess? Platfora was technology that was on-premises and it ran on the latest technologies of Hadoop and Spark. Mm -hmm. And so what we knew coming into this project was we need to really embrace the power of one. Uh, the thing that we believe at Workday is, is one of the things that makes us different of single user experience, single source of truth, single interface, single, um, single security model, for instance. And so we decomposed all of that technology and integrated it in very tightly into, into Workday. And at the end, what we come out with now with Workday Prism Analytics is, are a couple components. One is data integration, the ability to bring in data from external sources into Workday and be able, be able to bring that in in mass. Two, what we call self-service data preparation. And that's a process, data preparation is a process that's typically required expert users to be able to do. And this is uh, designed for business users and expert users, if you want to allow them mm -hmm. to do it, to do that themselves. And that is manipulating these massive data sets into something that's ready to query. And last piece is a high performance query engine that we are tying together with our existing reports, scorecards, and dashboards at Workday. So now you can bring in all of your external data and your Workday data together into the system and tie it to our existing reporting interfaces. Mm -hmm. Wow, that sounds like a lot of work. It's been a lot of work. But we're really excited about seeing the results. That's great. So I'm, I'm hesitant, having heard you describe how you're going to be able to talk to the system, I'm hesitant to ask what does the future look like, because that already sounds pretty Jetson car-like. But um, what, what does the future look like? So, what I just described in terms of uh, data integration, data prep, and, and the query engine, and data governance on top of that, that's the first step. The next step is bringing that uh, visual data discovery interface uh, to our end users, allowing our business users to just drag and drop data and get visual answers instantly. So that's the next step. The next step beyond that is, I, I think, gets pretty cool. Uh, it starts to introdu introduce technologies like machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence to be able to uh, uh, do what we call augmented data discovery. It will, instead of just telling you the answer to the question that you asked, it will also tell you what the drivers are behind the answer to the question that you asked. So, for instance, if we talk about show me revenue for the past year by quarter, uh, we'd be able to show you that in, in a graph, but we'd also be able to tell you that the reason that Q2 was up was because uh, you had more promotions that were running in the East Coast of the United States, and that drove more revenue into Q2. Mm -hmm. And so getting deeper into the, into the data without having to have a business user ask that next, next question. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, we start uh, looking at things like bringing data as a service and benchmarking data into into data discovery, allowing people to benchmark their business against other people, against their peers. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So um, I guess you've seen a lot of analytics projects in the course of your career, um, many successful, and um, presumably many also failed. So are there any kind of tips or tricks or things you recommend people avoid as they, as they embark on analytics projects? The projects that I've seen that haven't gone well uh, started by people wanting data and analytics uh, without a clear purpose in mind. And so I would recommend to our customers, approach this from the questions that you need to answer your, uh, you know, your, your business function. Start with a use case in mind. Uh, don't just say, I need analytics. Say, I need it to solve a particular business uh, problem. Makes sense. So, you know, if you just bring in your financial data, you're unlikely to be able to predict the weather, but, <laughs> right. Maybe, I don't know. Okay, well, that's maybe another day's work. Okay, well, thanks for coming in today, Pete. I enjoyed the conversation, and um, hopefully you enjoyed this edition of Behind the Cloud. Yeah.